Hello everyone and welcome to another very nice game. It's played in round 3 of the 2018 Isle of Man Chess.com's tournament, uh, international tournament, and uh, I'm sure you're all going to enjoy it. It's um, how how to really attack the Sicilian defense. Uh, it's between uh, Ramesh Babu Pragnananda and Pavel Elyanov. I don't think any of them need any uh, additional introduction, uh, so I think it's best if we just dive straight into the game. Uh, Pragu has the white pieces and he opens with e4, as I already mentioned a Sicilian has been played. Uh, we have c5, knight to f3, knight to c6, d4, uh, c captures, knight captures, knight to f6, and now knight to c c3, d open Sicilian. Uh, d6 and bishop to g5, the uh, Richter Rausa variation. Uh, we have e6, queen to d2, a6, and now comes castles. Uh, we have bishop to e7, uh, f3, uh, giving further protection uh, to the e4 pawn, and also uh, preparing. Uh, if black decides to castle kingside, which is most often the case, uh, white wants to start expanding uh, the kingside with the g4 and h4. Uh, we have uh, queen to c7 by Elyanov, and now comes h4. Uh, now, depending on what black plays, uh, even ideas are uh, capturing on f6, and then already you can push g4 and have uh, a target on f6 uh, to push g5. Uh, so knight captures on d4 by Elanov, queen captures on d4, and now comes b5. Elanov starts expanding on the queen side uh, as Prago castled queen side. Uh, we have queen to d2, uh, a very nice move. Uh, you could also uh, start attacking immediately with g4, uh, but then your queen is on uh, d4, and at some point, perhaps, uh, if black, if white decides to capture on f6, uh, then black will also have a nice tempo on the queen with uh, bishop to f6, eyeing the queen on d4. Uh, so, uh, Prago first goes back with the queen, queen to d2, and now we have bishop to b7. Uh, king to b4, king to b1, a nice prophylactic move. Uh, some of you mentioned in the comments that I shouldn't be using the word prophylactic because it means something uh, other than what I think it means, but uh, you should definitely Google prophylactic and you will see that it can definitely be used in a chest, uh, as a chess term, and in fact a lot of chess authors use it uh, in their books. And also it's a very nice word. Uh, so here we have castles, and uh, here on move 13, uh, uh, where Elyanov castle, this uh, position was never before found uh, on the board uh, in any of the uh, rated games that are available in the database. So this is now a completely new game. And okay, we have knight to e2, a very nice move by Pragnananda, as if you start with the g4 immediately, then you have to face b4. And I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of you perhaps even had this exact same position on the board if you play uh, against the Sicilian and you like the, the bishop g5 variation, then perhaps you wanted to start attacking immediately. Uh, black counterattacked on the queen side with uh, b4, and now you have to decide what to do. And here you would most likely spend uh, most of your time uh, deciding whether you want to go uh, knight to a4 or knight to e2. And then you see knight, okay, knight, knight a4, perhaps bishop to c6. I don't like knight to a4, perhaps I want to go knight e2, but then. Uh, what, what have I done? Uh, so Prago uh, avoids all of this and he instead after castles goes knight to e2 immediately. So now b4 uh, isn't really all that impressive because you can simply capture the pawn. And black doesn't really have any good counterplay here even if d5 creating uh, a discovered attack against the queen. Queen c3, the knight from e2 is already nicely guarding c3 so black would have just uh, blundered a pawn. Uh, so, okay, after Prague's knight e2, we have rook a to c8. Now, uh, Elianov definitely does have some nice pressure. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, nice pressure along uh, the c file. Uh, we have knight to d4, a very nice central square uh, for Prague's knight, also from d4. Uh, for the moment, uh, the knight is also gives protection to the c2 pawn. Uh, rook f to e8. Uh, Elianov wants to play uh, knight to d7, so he wants this rook to be protecting the bishop. Uh, uh, that occupies e7. And finally, now that there are no more tricky b4 uh, ideas, uh, Prago does go g4. And okay, we have knight to d7, bishop captures on e7, rook captures on e7, and now h5. Uh, it's interesting, uh, there are there are some very nice games where, uh, for example, Mikhail Tal had positions like this, and then he would go immediately g5. And then after black would make some move, he would immediately go g6. And uh, it doesn't matter what black plays, Tal already started his attack, and now you're playing his game. And although the engine doesn't really approve this, uh, 
it would be, you know, black who's defending and, uh, well, if you're someone who enjoys attacking, perhaps you might want to consider ideas like this. Perhaps not in this exact same position, uh, but then after black recaptures, you can already play h6 and already you are threatening to open up uh, your h file and uh, have a very nice attack. So although it doesn't show promise uh, in this exact, exact, exact same position, perhaps uh, in some of your games uh, you might want to consider the immediate g5, g6, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And okay, uh, Prago goes h5, uh, and now we have d5. If you're, as I always say, if you're able to play d5 in the Sicilian and uh, not feel bad about it afterwards, you're definitely going to have a great game as black. Uh, Prago plays h6, and now g6. G6, closing up the position on the king side, and now it's uh, interesting how to continue this attack by white. As if you can't uh, continue attacking, then it's black who's going to start attacking you uh, on the queen side, and then uh, of course black will be better. Uh, so bishop to d3 definitely a move white should consider. Uh, the bishop from d3 will be uh, giving further protection to the c2 pawn, and then the queen will be able to move. Uh, but first, Prago wants to open up the e file. He plays e captures on d5, we have bishop captures on d5, and only now he plays bishop to d3. Uh, queen to e5, uh, attacking uh, Prago's knight on d4, and now comes bishop to e4. Uh, now the queen and rook are protecting the knight. We have bishop captures on e4, f captures on e4, and now comes knight to f6. Uh, it's interesting... Um, you also might consider capturing here, uh, but then after g5, uh, this this queen would be uh, not very, uh, not excellently placed on e4. This rook from h is coming to e1, the queen is now uh, guarding the g5 pawn, and white would get a lot of activity for this uh, one pawn. But it's uh, it's definitely playable for black. Uh, however, Elianov decides to go knight to f6. Now he's attacking both both pawns. Uh, and Prago has a very nice idea. He plays rook h to e1. Uh, and now we have rook to d7. Uh, it's very interesting. Rook, uh, knight captures on g4 uh, doesn't work because of knight to c6 winning the exchange. Your rook is uh, under attack and also your queen here is under attack. And of course if you capture then you're getting checkmated. Uh, queen d8 check. King has to, uh, Rook has a block and now queen captures will be checkmate as the pawn is uh, guarding the g7 square. Uh, so after rook hd1, uh, interestingly, the best idea for black is actually knight captures on e4. And it's uh, it's very strange, because now queen to e3 uh, is no threat against the knight on e4, because black can defend with f5. Uh, and on the other hand, after knight captures on e4, uh, queen to b4, uh, now your knight uh, is feeling the pressure, but also uh, your rook is under attack here. Queen to c5 solves all of black's problems. Queen captures... Knight captures, you, you get the knight out of the way, and uh, black simply keeps his extra pawn. Uh, but for some reason, uh, Elianov doesn't uh, find this move to be particularly interesting for him. Uh, rather, he plays uh, rook to d7, pinning the knight on d4, uh, but now it's a completely different uh, situation. Here, Prago finds a very nice move, he plays g5. And now uh, he forces the knight to move. Uh, the, the, of course, the queen cannot capture as this queen is guarding the g5 pawn, but now it's a different situation. Now you cannot capture here uh, because now queen to e3 and you no longer have f5. Uh, if f5 now, then you have g captures on f6 en passant and there is no other pawn that can protect the knight on e4. Uh, so it would be very unfortunate here uh, for black as you would be losing a piece. Uh, and on the other hand, after queen to e3, if you try something like rook c to d8, which is uh, your only option, then you get c3, defending the knight here, and now after queen captures on g5, as there's really no better move, queen captures here, uh, yes, you are down some pawns, but you are up a piece, and you will most likely win this game as white. So after this uh, excellent move by Prago g5, we have knight to g4 by Elanov. And okay, queen to g2, uh, pressuring the knight once again. Now uh, Prago forces queen captures on g5. And now, uh, again, this is all very, very much forcing from Prago's side, e5. Uh, a, a beautiful move that uh, uh, prevents f5. You don't want to allow f5 to give this knight further protection as e captures on f6 on Passan is coming. And also the threat is rook to e4 and then winning the knight. As you can't move the queen, the queen has to keep an eye on the knight and you can't move the knight because the queen on g5 is undefended. So uh, here Elanov plays a really beautiful move. Elanov plays queen to f4. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a really beautiful va variation that shows why now rook to e4 is not playable. So uh, it's, it's really an interesting um, 
uh, how I would put it. It's um, something uh, you should really pause the video here and try to see why rook to e4 doesn't work. Uh, why it's good? Why why queen to f4 is such a beautiful move? Uh, because you will really feel good about yourself. So feel free to do it, and you know there's no why or what. Uh, just feel free to do it, and then I will I will show you why. So for those of you who figured it out, congratulations, you are an excellent defender. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, here rook to e4 uh, isn't all that great because of knight to e3, attacking the white queen here. Uh, and after rook captures on f4, knight captures on g2, rook moves as the knight is attacking the rook. Now, okay, it's not all that impressive to find why this is now playable, but uh, it seems like rook to d2 will be a very unpleasant move for this knight, as it uh, doesn't really have all that many squares to go to. Uh, then you have to see that rook to d5 is the move for black, and after rook to d2 attacking the knight, uh, then black has this excellent f5 move that uh, threatens the rook here. Uh, and after e captures on f6, now you have e5. And this is now very, very beautiful. Uh, of course, the knight is now uh, attacked twice. Uh, you can't move the knight because the rook on d2 is un un unprotected. So after rook captures here, you have rook captures here. Uh, rook captures, pawn captures. And now after rook to d2, you have rook to c6. You're going to pick up this pawn. Uh, and after rook captures, rook captures. Uh, you have to be careful or otherwise you're going to be checkmated here. And uh, h6 is a very weak pawn. Uh, Black will most likely win it at some point and enjoy a much better endgame. So here, this is why queen to f4 is such a beautiful move by Elianov. But Prago doesn't uh, bite. He goes knight to c6. Uh, the queen is guarding the knight here and uh, he sets, uh, uh, per well, perhaps not a trap, but it's, uh, it's a very nice idea uh, he sets in motion. Uh, knight to e3 here. Uh, it's very interesting if you go uh, rook d to c7, uh, which is also another option uh, with a double attack on this knight, then uh, Prago's idea was uh, in fact rook to e4. And then after knight to e3, rook captures on f4, knight captures on g2, and now rook f to d4. Uh, black will not be able to capture the knight because of another uh, checkmating sequence as the pawn is still covering the g7 square. Uh, so after knight to c6, we have knight to e3 by Elanov, uh, and here Prago plays the, the beautiful rook captures on d7. Uh, a, a very nice queen sacrifice, knight captures on g2, and now comes knight to e7 check. Uh, king to f8, it doesn't matter, king to f8 or king to h8, and now knight captures on c8, and here is the point of this queen sacrifice, the knight is covering the e7 square, and here black does not have the time to capture here, uh, if knight captures, then rook to d8 will be checkmate, as pawn is still covering g7, and the knight is covering uh, the e7 square. Uh, so, after knight captures on c8, uh, queen captures on h8 by Elanov. Uh, we have uh, rook to f1, getting the rook out of the way, and also pressuring the f7 square, and there's really no way to defend it other than to block the rook. Knight to f4 is played, uh, but now you can really see uh, in how much trouble black is. The queen is stuck here guarding the knight on f4. Of course, at some point black will push g5, but still a very unpleasant position for black. Uh, knight to d6, pressuring the f7 pawn. We have g5, and now comes knight captures on f7 with an attack on the queen. Uh, queen to g7, and now comes rook to d8 check. Of course, now if you capture, then rook d7 check will win the queen. Uh, so after rook to d8 check, king to e7. Uh, and here we have rook to a8, uh, threatening rook to a7. Uh, and in this position, Pavel Ilyanov decided to play queen captures on f7. He decided to give back the queen. Uh, but even if he played something like queen to g6 to get the queen out of the way, out of the 7th rank, then knight to d6 is coming, and you can see that this king ha really has no squares uh, he can go to. Uh, the, the knight, rook, and pawn are really uh, <laughs> covering the king in. Uh, ideas like rook to d1, rook to e8 are coming, and it will be very unpleasant for the black king. Uh, so after rook to a8, a8 uh, Elian decided to play queen captures um, uh, on f7, but... Uh, uh, it seems that out of the two evils, this was uh, this was the greater one. Uh, rook to a7 check, we have king to f8, and now rook captures on f7. King captures, and now b3, preparing c4. Uh, now, b4 seems like a very nice move here for Lyanov to, to stop the advance uh, of Prague's queenside pawns, but uh, he goes for h5 here. Uh, he wants to start pushing his own pass pawn as soon as possible. And okay, Prague takes this opportunity, he creates a pass pawn on the queenside, we have c4. B captures, B captures, now a passed C pawn has been created, we have H4 and now C5, so we'll have to see uh, whose passed pawn is, is a faster pawn, 
Uh, king to e7 and now rook to d1, cutting off the king uh, from the use of the d file. So, of course, this knight will block it at some point so the king can approach the pawn, but uh, until then, first h3, further advancing his own passed pawn. Uh, we have c6, knight to d5, now the king can approach the passed pawn, but uh, this was all progress plan. Uh, here, rook to g1, attacking the g5 pawn uh, and now forcing h2. h2 is played and now rook to h1. Uh, this was all planned. Knight to b4 and now we have c7, forcing the king to go further back. King to d7 and now comes rook captures on h2. King captures on h7 and now rook to h6. I'm uh, preparing to bring this rook behind uh, the past g pawn. Uh, king to d7 and now comes... Um, uh, rook to g6, we have a5 and rook captures on g5. So it's uh, a rook and two pawns against a knight and two pawns. All in all, should be a winning game. Uh, we have king to c6 and now king to b2. We have king to d5, king to b3 uh, and now king to d4. Uh, if you try something like knight to d3, yes, you will win this pawn, but it will not matter very much. King to a4, knight captures, uh, and now after king captures on a5, you're... Uh, too late to the race. You still have to move this knight for now. The knight is pinned. You have to move the king, then the knight, and then only you can start pushing your pawn. And you will be far too late. White will already start pushing. Knight moves. You can attack the knight. Knight moves and now here. And uh, white will, of course, be very much faster with his pawn. And still he has a rook against the knight. So completely winning. Uh, after king to b3, uh, king to d4. Uh, we have rook to h5. Uh, Although, uh, instead of this rook to h5 move, uh, you could have considered something like uh, a3, but then knight to c6, and uh, it's not all that clear how white can improve his position. So here Prago decides to waste a move. Uh, he plays rook to h5, and he waits for black to either move his king or the knight. And here Elianov does play knight to c6, and only da now does Prago go king to a4. And now again, if you capture here, uh, your knight will still be in the way, you will not be able to start pushing your own past pawn, so not really something you want to do. Uh, here we have king to c4 by Elianov, uh, trying to close Prago's king in, and now rook to h6, at attacking the e6 pawn. King to d5, now comes king to b5, uh, and now we have knight captures on e5 finally. Uh, rook uh, pinning the knight, we have king to d4 unpinning and now king captures on a5. Uh, king to d3, now comes king to b5 making room to start pushing his own passed pawn and now e5. Elianov starts pushing his passed pawn uh, as well. Uh, a4, we have knight to f4 attacking the rook, rook to h4 pinning the knight, king to d5 unpinning. Uh, a5, we have knight to e6 and here after rook to c4. Uh, closing off the C file for uh, Elianov's rook. It was in this position on move 64 uh, that Pavel Elianov decided to resign the game. So uh, an excellent uh, victory uh, for uh, for Ramesh Babu Pragnananda in round three of the 2018 Isle of Man uh, international tournament. Uh, if, if you want, you can uh, quickly see that if uh, the pushing of the pawn starts here, for example, e4, a6, e3, a7, e2, a8, check is coming, a8, queen is coming with check, so there's really nothing for black to do here. Uh, mate is soon to follow. So yeah, uh, like I said, after rook to c4, uh, Eliano resigned and an excellent victory for Ramesh Babu Pragnananda. And uh, here, if you've been following the Bobby Fischer series, uh, you might remember, I think it was around... Uh, I don't know, so somewhere in the second half of the match, uh, Miguel Nidor flew in from Buenos Aires to, to Reykjavik and he uh, he was interviewed briefly and he said that one of the things that was amazing about Bobby Fischer uh, was that uh, uh, he was different uh, compared to other grandmasters in a way that uh, others, other grandmasters uh, studied how to win, uh, whereas Bobby Fischer, uh, he studied why, why a certain uh, player lost a certain game. So he had... Uh, he had thousands of thousands of thousands of these positions of why someone lost a certain game in, in his head. And that, that's what made him a very different player than anyone else and uh, a lot more dangerous than anyone else. So here, this is one of the games that would be uh, excellent to, <laughs> to check out move by move uh, why, uh, why Elianov lost this game. There are uh, a lot of reasons, but if, if you want to be like Bobby Fischer, you can take this game and really, really study why Elianov lost this game. 
So uh, I thought that, that'd be you know an, a nice, interesting thing to say. I do hope you enjoyed that. Um, and also uh, a brief announcement. Uh, I will soon be starting um, uh, li uh, like a chess trivia or a chess quiz uh, on my Instagram profile. So uh, if you enjoy a nice chess quiz or a nice chess trivia, like, uh, I don't know, I still haven't decided on the format, perhaps uh, once a week, 10, 20 questions, you know, of, uh, of some interesting uh, questions where you can uh, improve your vast knowledge on a weekly basis uh, and then perhaps one bigger trivia uh, for example once a month uh, then uh, the first thing you will see in the description below is a link to my instagram profile uh, you know feel free to to follow that as well and uh, you will you know be able to get in on the action of uh, increasing your vast knowledge so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. There will be uh, a lot of useful links in the description as well, like uh, a link to the official page of the I Am Chess, uh, their, all, all of their social media profiles, so feel free to check out that as well. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Joseph Fodor, uh, Jeffrey Cook, uh, Jomi A. Barben, uh, Caitlin Staunton, and uh, Pirmin Odermatt for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon, uh, hopefully with some more interesting content. See you soon.